Well, we're, we're catching up on something that we did quite some time back. We did the railroads of John W. Young. They're fun. They're Love really history. fun. And we covered the story up and down and which way and back ways and all over the place. But uh, in doing a little exploring, I discovered some railroad grade that we didn't know about. Right. Um, we knew that a railroad grade went up into a direction and ended, but as it turns out, it went much farther up there than we knew oh. and ends up in one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen. Right. So check this out. We're back to the railroads of John W. Young. <laughs> So while we were out exploring, uh, looking for railroad grades, actually, for John Young. Yes, you've been on the internet again. I've been exploring, and we found this magical place. What a find. And this was the location of Robert Gardner's sawmill that he built in 1848, which is why this area is now called Mill Creek. Oh, I see. Now every day about 50,000 people travel down Highland Drive and they go right past this monument. Catch the monument. Did you see it? Barely. Just barely. Let's back up and take a better look. And here it, there, right oh, there. Oh, right there. The historic marker that indicates the location of Robert Gardner's sawmill on Mill Creek. That is cool. Isn't that neat? And, and people drive past it, they don't even know it's here. I didn't pay it any uh, never mind. I, I, mean, I had no yeah. idea. No. Nope, nope. This was our first time to wander over there and find this, the site of Gardner's Mill. That is so neat. This is a photograph probably from the 1870s. It's sort of hard to tell, but there weren't a lot of photographs taken in Salt Lake City before 1870. Now this is a much later photograph of the sawmill. You can tell that by the fact that there's a radial saw here. The original saw was a vertical, up and down, five-bladed saw. A much more primitive system, but hey, it, it did the job. Notice that it uses a standard mill wheel, a gravity wheel, like you'd see at Disneyland or something. By this time, a lot of mills were using water turbines instead of mill wheels. Here's a picture of the original up and down five-bladed vertical saw. Here again, uh, a later photograph, but it, it looks a little beat up. It does. Kind of, uh, because it's, it's quite a bit after the time when the mill was built. And Robert Gardner also built his home here, and he built it out of adobe brick because there wasn't a lot of brick at the time, and he made his own bricks out of mud, adobe brick. And the house is still standing. What a beautiful place. Isn't that a beautiful home? And this is the oldest still standing home in Salt Lake City. It doesn't look like it, because keep in mind, it's been remodeled some, you know, I don't know, 10 times over the 150 years that it's been around. But on close examination, that light uh, tan yellow area is the original adobe brick. It's still there and it's just been painted. I really love the way they have this remodeled or renovated. The presentation is just beautiful. And some of the interior areas have been restored. Wow. All the way back to their original because they found a lot of original construction inside. Now here's a photograph of the home probably some 20, 25 years after it was built. Uh, not a lot of photographs taken before around 1870 in the Salt Lake Valley, but some. And this is Robert Gardner from about that same time. He and his brother arrived with the Mormon pioneers, not on that first wagon train, but later in about October. A couple of rugged Scotsmen. This is uh, his brother Archibald. And they were both millwrights. Archibald was the much more famous of the two millwrights. You know, he's also my great-great-grandfather. Oh, wow. <laughs> but the reason he's so well-known is one of his mills is still standing in West Jordan. Isn't that neat? That is cool. It's almost sort of a little shopping mall village area now called Gardner Mill. Well, that is neat. And very appropriately named. I'd love to go here. It's really neat. These are all little shops. Wow. And there's a train station. All this stuff has been moved in, of course. It's not the original. The only thing original is the mill. 
Robert's mill, uh, the sawmill, was on the other side of the creek, over there in that grassy area, needless to say, no longer exists. Okay, enter John W. Young, one of Brigham Young's sons, best known as a railroad builder. He was fanatical about building three-foot gauge railroads after the railroads arrived in Utah in 1869. His most famous railroad, the Utah Northern, went from Salt Lake City to Park City. This railroad was later taken over by the Denver and Rio Grande Western and standard gauged in this photograph. We can see that it's now a standard gauge railroad. But in this photograph taken at the mouth of Parley's Canyon at Suicide Rock, we can see that for a period of time they had to run dual gauge, both three foot and standard gauge. John Young had taken over the old sugar mill at Sugar House and was using that as his locomotive shops. It's right where the Barnes & Noble bookstore stands now, on 11th East in Sugar House. Now another amazing place we like to go is Hidden Hollow in Sugar House. Isn't that fun? Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And this is where John Young's railroad uh, came up from the engine shops on its way to Park City this little tiny bit of grade right here, the only surviving narrow gauge grade in the area. The original three foot gauge tracks came right up the middle of 11th East and then continued on south for a distance. In this photograph, we can see that there's a Union Pacific boxcar parked on the old original tracks, which continued south up the middle of 11th East to where that becomes Highland Drive, and then they diverted slightly west following the Jordan Irrigation Canal. Needless to say, the area has changed a lot in 170 years. It sure has. <laughs> this is Highland Drive today, where it passes under Interstate 80. There's just nothing of this left anymore. Yeah, not even the sugar mill. After the Rio Grande took the railroad over, they tore out the tracks on 11th East and moved the standard gauge tracks to the current location of the Sugar House trolley and then right up this curved road right here to the back side of Fairmont Park. Uh, it ran right along the eastern edge of Fairmont Park back where you can see that red brick wall. Because those tracks were in use into the 1970s, when they built Interstate 80, they had to put a much wider bridge here to accommodate the tracks, which also ran under the freeway. And now the railroad grade is this little park back in here. What a wonderful little walking park. Yes, another rails to trails, I guess you could say. Right. It runs right behind this substation that used to be a substation for the old Salt Lake trolley system and that's still standing. I love the building behind it. And, and then right here, it ran uh, where you can see the high voltage lines on the left side of the picture. Those uh, power lines have been built right up the middle of the old grade. So it makes it finding the grade really easy. Now the buildings there on the left are on the east side of the Forestdale Golf Course. Wow. And the tracks ran right along the, the back nine <laughs> <laughs> to the Forestdale Golf Course. This stone wall at the Greystone Apartments marks where the grade came through that area and then onto the brickyard. Here again, the high voltage transmission lines are running right up the middle of the old grade, right past the only surviving artifact of the brickyard, this old original smokestack. Now, of course, originally this was all a narrow gauge line and then it was John Young's intention to continue the line south past the brickyard all the way to the granite paper mill, which still stands right at the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon. Well, John Young never made it out here, and history shows that he continued his railroad a short distance south of the brickyard, but nobody knows just exactly where it ended presumably to a point just a few hundred yards south of the brickyard. So it sort of makes you wonder why he wouldn't have brought the tracks all the way up to the sawmill. Right. And, and I hadn't really thought about that in large part because we didn't know the sawmill was there. <laughs> but uh, right here, this is the location of the brickyard, this whole gray area here. And it's hard to say how much of this area was brickyard back before the roads were put in. 
but uh, the area just over here is the old standard gauge tracks. This we know because they were in use when, when we were kids. <laughs> but on the other side of the road is a little tiny piece of narrow gauge grade. And just as the history shows, it runs along the eastern side of the Jordan Irrigation Canal, which is still there. But the assumption has always been that this was the end of the grade right here. But we were, well, we were at Home Depot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking over the fence, and there was some grade over here. Right. And I'm going, um, there's grade on the eastern side of the Jordan Canal. What's with that? Could this be more of John Young's railroad coming clear up into here? And I'll bet it is. Sure looks like it. Now, it definitely stops right here. Nothing was built past this point. But it makes you wonder if he wasn't heading for uh, the sawmill, which was right here where the Jordan Canal crosses over the top of Mill Creek, right here. This is said Jordan Canal. Oh. It's actually kind of a pretty thing. It is. Uh, it was built very, very early on in the 1850s. Uh, to bring irrigation water to all of the farms out here. This is just barely south of Gardner's Mill, runs right through people's yards, and then just back here, it crosses over the top of Mill Creek. At the back there, you can just barely see the aqueduct that carries the canal over Mill Creek. A river crossing over a river, imagine that. That's fun. Now from Mill Creek over here, at the very back, you can just barely see the aqueduct carrying the canal over the creek. And that black iron fence right there, well, that's the home of Robert Gardner. Wow. So it sure looks to me like the intent was to bring the tracks to the sawmill. Oh. But I think I figured out why they didn't. Oh? By the time John Young was building his railroads, Robert Gardner had gone off on a mission to Canada. Oh, my. As, as Mormons tend to right. do. Right. <laughs> and, and the family wasn't really running the sawmill. It was kind of an on-again, off-again thing. So there was really no reason to bring the tracks up here until the mill reopened, which it never did. When Robert Gardner got back from his mission, well, he never reopened the mill. He just tore it down and then lived out the balance of his days here on Mill Creek in his beautiful little house. Well, it's sure nice to be able to go out on a nice, beautiful summer day like this and walk railroad grades. Yeah, I miss this, especially this time of year when there's snow. Yeah, it's fun to go back to this footage and go, you know, it isn't always all cold and frozen. Sometimes it's just plain beautiful. And the idea that there are these historic artifacts, railroad grades, and that sort of thing, right in your own backyard. Right, and with walking trails, they encourage people to come and walk here. And, oh boy, am I looking forward to getting back out here and doing some walking. Absolutely. As soon as the snow melts. Was that the most beautiful place? Talk about a little Shangri-La, that, what? And right in the middle of Salt Lake City. Yeah, I and, wanna live there. Yeah, and, and to discover too that that little house here doesn't look like it, but it's the oldest house in Salt Lake That's City. That's just incredible. It was uh, built only a couple of months, about eight, mo uh, eight weeks after the pioneers arrived, mm -hmm. that house was finished. And so they said, this is our place. This is our place. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. Anyway, it, it's all very, very fascinating and wonderful. And, and just beautiful. It is. Anyway, if you uh, haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here's your opportunity. Are we ready for it? <laughs> Zoink! <laughs> the blue button right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. E e as beautiful as it is. And we hope you didn't find it uh, boring, just beautiful. Just beautiful. And, and we will see you on Tuesday. We'll see, see you. Bye-bye.